Every four minutes during peak times, a silent, driverless train glides into a station in Sydney, Australia, carrying up to 1,500 people. This isn't a scene from a futuristic film, it's the Sydney Metro. To make this possible, engineers had to dig tunnels so deep. One section plunges 38 meters underground. That's like building a railway beneath a 13-story building. This incredible network, stretching over 113 kilometers when finished, is designed to move over 45,000 people every hour in each direction, almost double what the old system could handle. How did they achieve this impossible feat? And what other secrets lie beneath Sydney's bustling streets? The idea of a separate modern metro system, independent from the older network, in Sydney first popped up in 2001, aiming to solve future crowding problems. This need for a new type of rail system was clear. While the existing network expanded, it faced growing capacity limits. After a few different plans and changes, the current Sydney Metro project began to truly take form around 2012. This project was different. It would use single-deck, driverless trains, a first for Australia. This marked a big change in how Sydney planned its transport, moving towards a system built for massive future growth. To create the vast network of tunnels, engineers unleashed incredible machines called Tunnel Boring Machines, or TBMs. They're colossal. Each TBM weighs around 1,300 tons, which is like the weight of more than 200 large elephants. They are also incredibly long, stretching up to 165 meters, longer than two giant Airbus A380 airplanes lined up nose to tail. Their massive cutting heads are about seven meters across, almost as tall as a two-story house. These mechanical worms work tirelessly, digging about 200 meters of tunnel every single week. As they chew through the earth, they remove a staggering amount of material. For just one 5.7 kilometer section, they dug out over 1.1 million tons of rock and soil. To help you picture that, it's enough material to fill about 180 Olympic-sized swimming pools. This immense volume of excavated material, with almost 6 million tons estimated for reuse from the City and Southwest project alone, highlights a significant challenge beyond just digging. It's about managing a massive waste stream and finding sustainable solutions. The project's focus on spoil management and resource efficiency means turning this potential waste into a valuable resource, a critical part of modern large-scale infrastructure. But the TBMs don't just dig, they also build. As they move forward, they install pre-cast concrete segments to line the tunnel walls. Each of these segments weighs about 3.8 tons, similar to a large truck, and six of them are carefully pieced together to form one strong ring around the tunnel. This creates a waterproof and permanent lining. The fact that over 41,000 concrete segments are produced and installed, each weighing 3.8 tons, shows an incredible level of precision manufacturing and assembly on a massive scale. This isn't just about strong materials, it's about consistent quality and exact fit for every single segment. The use of innovative mixes, like 50% supplementary cementitious material and 50% manufactured sand in these segments, further ensuring uniformity and strength for a perfect fit underground. Building a tunnel under Sydney Harbour was one of the biggest challenges. The ground beneath the harbour isn't solid rock everywhere. It's filled with soft sediments, like yogurt or jelly. This meant regular TBMs wouldn't work. Engineers needed a special 975-ton machine designed to handle high water pressures and precisely control the support pressure with an air cushion. The historical difficulties of tunnelling in Sydney's complex geology, particularly under the harbour in 1915, where unexpected deep rock levels and fissures led to extreme cost and time overruns, served as a crucial lesson. Modern engineers applied this lesson by investing heavily in advanced geological surveys and developing highly specialized TBMs to avoid similar risks. Imagine the tension when bubbles appeared on the harbor surface directly above the TBM. It turned out to be a controlled air leak, not a disaster, 
showing the incredible precision at work. Additionally, Sydney's geology is tricky. While much of it is sandstone, which is hard to dig through, it also creates silica and quartz dust that can be a health risk for workers. Other areas have soil instability, expansive clays that change volume with water, and groundwater issues that can flood excavations. Engineers had to conduct extensive geological surveys and use different techniques, like dewatering systems, to manage these complex conditions. Digging deep tunnels and building stations in the heart of a busy city like Sydney meant doing it without shutting down daily life. This required meticulous planning to determine exact tunnel paths and depths, avoiding existing infrastructure and minimizing disruption above ground. Even transforming the 117-year-old Central Station, a country's busiest rail hub, had to happen with minimal impact on its 20-hour-a-day operations. The urban environment itself presented unique engineering challenges that demanded innovative construction methods. For example, at Central, they used a top-down fit-out construction approach, where structures were suspended from above. This allowed for faster, safer construction in a constrained environment, and even led to significant carbon reductions by reducing material quantities. Also, Sydney metro stations are engineering marvels built far beneath the ground. For example, the new metro platforms at Central Station are 27 metres deep, which is like going down nine storeys underground. The average depth for the city and southwest line is 35 metres, about 12 storeys down. And for Sydney Metro West, it's even deeper at 38 metres, roughly 13 storeys below the surface. Sydney Metro is Australia's first fully automated metro rail network. This means the trains operate without a driver on board, a system known as Grade of Automation 4 or GORE 4. It's like having a super smart computer brain controlling every aspect of the train's journey. This system reduces human errors and response times, leading to faster journeys, shorter waiting times, and reduced operational costs. All of this is managed from a high-tech operations control center at Talawong Road. Think of it as the Metro's brain, where expert controllers monitor every train, tunnel, and platform. This center uses a massive 32-meter by 3.6-meter LED video wall, nicknamed the WOW Board, with 41 million pixels, to display real-time information across the entire network, 24 hours a day. In a driverless system, the central control room becomes the eyes and ears of the entire network, allowing human operators to oversee the automated system, identify anomalies, and respond to incidents faster. The trains use a special system called Herbalis 400, which is a communications-based train control, or CBTC, signaling system. This technology ensures trains run safely, automatically, and precisely. It handles everything from starting and stopping to opening doors and detecting obstacles, making sure trains arrive every four minutes in peak times. Safety is built into every part of the Sydney Metro. One key feature is the platform screen doors. These are like glass walls with doors that line the edge of the platform, opening only when the train is perfectly aligned and stopped. This prevents people or objects from falling onto the tracks, making stations much safer. The implementation of these doors is a direct engineering response to the driverless nature of the metro. Without a human driver to visually check the platform, these automated physical barriers become essential for passenger safety. Another Australian first safety innovation is the mechanical gap fillers. These clever devices automatically extend from the platform to bridge the small gap between the train and the platform when it arrives. This is especially helpful at older stations where platforms might not be perfectly straight, ensuring a smooth and safe boarding experience for everyone. The system also has incredible surveillance. There are more than 230 cameras just in the Sydney Metro Northwest tunnels, and each train has 38 cameras. Plus, there are emergency intercoms on trains and video help points on all platforms. So help is always just a button away. There are even corridor intrusion detection and obstacle detection systems to keep the tracks clear. The Sydney Metro also uses modern electric trains called Metropolis Stock, built by Ulstom. These trains are designed for speed, 
reaching up to 100 km per hour in the new tunnels. That's like driving a car at highway speed, but underground. Each train set has six carriages, with plans to expand to eight carriages in the future if needed. A six-car train can carry about 1,100 people, and an eight-car train could carry up to 1,500 people. Inside, you'll find air conditioning, comfortable longitudinal seating, and even USB charging ports. They have wide double doors for quick boarding and special areas for prams, luggage, and bicycles. The trains run on a standard track gauge of 1,435 millimeters, the same as many railways worldwide. The Northwest, City, and Southwest lines use 1,500 volt DC power from overhead lines, while the newer Western Sydney Airport and West lines will use a more powerful 25 kilovolt AC system. The use of two different electrification systems reflects an adaptive engineering strategy. The 25 kilovolt AC for newer, longer lines suggests a forward-looking approach for greater efficiency and power delivery over distance, while the DC system on earlier lines might have been a pragmatic choice for initial rollout or conversion of existing lines. During peak times, you can expect a train every four minutes, and the system is designed to eventually run a train every two minutes. This turn up and go service means you don't need a timetable. You just show up and a train will be there soon. The Sydney Metro is Australia's largest public transport project and its scale comes with a significant price tag. The Sydney Metro Northwest Line, which opened in 2019, cost around $8.3 billion. The City and Southwest Line, a 30 kilometer extension, has a cost range of $11.5 billion to $12.5 billion, with some reports indicating a potential increase of up to $1.1 billion. The proposed Western Sydney Metro is estimated to cost $25.3 billion, although the Sydney Metro Chief Executive states it is still tracking within this budget. The Western Sydney Airport line is budgeted at $11 billion, Despite these massive investments, the project has faced criticism. Some argue that the metro expenditure isn't fully relieving congestion on the existing rail system, and that the non-compatible nature of the metro system could make Sydney more vulnerable to service disruptions. The criticism about the underutilization of the metro's capacity, with the northwest sector unlikely to generate more than 16,000 boardings per hour, despite the system's 30,000 people per hour capacity, points to a planning and integration issue rather than a flaw in the core engineering capacity. The system can handle the volume, but the network design might not be effectively channeling enough passengers to it. The high cost of certain lines, like the Western Sydney Metro, has been questioned as a gross misuse of public funds, given its limited initial use. There have also been criticisms regarding the budget and lack of art at Metro West stations, with some suggesting high engineering standards are being blamed for cost overruns. The Sydney Metro West project is targeting an opening date of 2032. Throughout these massive undertakings, Sydney Metro emphasises its commitment to sustainability, aiming to optimise environmental, social and economic outcomes by managing noise, waste, carbon and heritage, and reusing millions of tonnes of excavated material. The Sydney Metro is more than just a train line, it's a city-shaping project. It's transforming urban mobility, making commutes faster and easier for thousands of people. By connecting key hubs like Sydney Olympic Park, Parramatta and the CBD, it's reducing travel time significantly, for example from Central to Chatswood in just 15 minutes. This rapid transit system is designed to reduce traffic congestion by removing thousands of vehicles from roads like the aging Harbour Bridge. If you found this deep dive into Sydney Metro fascinating, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more engineering marvels, leave a comment below with what shocked you the most, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next adventure.